I'll begin by having you think about the question. What makes your body yours? I know it seems like such an unusual question to ask and you might be thinking, what do you mean? It's so obvious, my body is simply mine. And you're right. The body is so closely related to the self that we often take this experience of embodiment for granted. But research suggests that at the more granular level, the experience of embodiment consists of body ownership, the sense of agency, so being in control of one's movements, and self-location, so being located within the boundaries of one's body. Typically, when we hear the term embodiment, we instantly think about our own physical bodies. But it seems that actually this my body sensation can be experienced in relation to external entities as well. And this can be achieved through perceptual illusions, which are here to show us just how flexible perception really is. The most well-known body ownership illusion is the rubber hand illusion. How does this illusion work? It's very simple. You can even try it out after the event today. In the initial experiment, participants' hands and the rubber hand were touched in synchrony using two paintbrushes by an experimenter. While the real hand was out of view, it was hidden under the table, the rubber hand was placed on the table in a visible and anatomically plausible position. And after just a couple of seconds of this synchronous visual tactile stimulation, participants started to experience the sensation of body ownership over the rubber hand. They started to report that they felt as if the rubber hand was now part of their own bodies. And this didn't happen when the visual tactile stimulation was asynchronous, so when there was a temporal mismatch between what people felt and what they saw. And the same effect was observed when synchronous visual motor feedback was provided, so that meant that the rubber hand and the real hand moved in synchrony, or when synchronous visual proprioceptive feedback was provided, which meant that the fake hand was spatially co-located with the real hand that was out of view. Right. So I might have convinced you that your brain can be tricked into thinking that you have a rubber hand, but you might be wondering, so what? This doesn't really change who you are in any way. Well, this is where VR comes into play to make things a whole lot more interesting. First of all, I'm sure most of you will be aware, virtual reality is a computer generated 3D world delivered to a display system such as a head-mounted display, uh, which has the purpose to surround and capture individuals' perception. You can see on the slide two of these headsets being used by members of the Create Lab at the University of Bath for research purposes. Replicating some of the rubber hand illusion work, VR technology has been used to show that virtual limbs can be perceptually attributed to one's body following the same principles as before. But unlike classical rubber hand illusion work, VR also allows the stimulation of whole bodies, which can become like digital proxies for individuals' physical bodies. And this is what opens endless possibilities for investigation. VR enables the exploration of possible selves in possible worlds from virtual animals to humans with three hands and tails to historical figures like Albert Einstein to superheroes and villains to the older version of yourself and finally to the digital you, one can experience what being in virtually anyone's skin feels like through VR embodiment. And this is essentially how you can be anyone in VR at the physical bodily level. But intriguingly, the effects of VR embodiment don't stop here, as according to the pioneering work of Professor Baylison and his team at Stanford University, the body one embodies in VR can have consequences on people's attitudes, behavior, and cognition. So according to the Proteus effect, people assimilate and self-attribute certain attitudinal and behavioral characteristics that they associate with and expect from the avatars they embody in VR. For example, people embodied in more attractive and taller avatars seem to behave more confidently than, uh, than people embodied in less attractive and shorter avatars. A range of fascinating studies conducted by Professor Mel Slater at the University of Barcelona have further examined the range of possible effects of VR embodiment. Adults embodied in child bodies tend to overestimate object sizes and to classify themselves as more childlike in comparison to adults embodied in adult bodies, even when these bodies were scaled to the same size as the child bodies. Similarly, Embodying white participants in a darker skin avatar that moved in synchrony with them seemed to result in a reduction in, impl in uh, racial implicit bias compared to being embodied in a lighter skin, a purple skin avatar, or not having a virtual body at all. Also, embodying Albert Einstein has been associated with improved performance on a cognitive task and a reduction in implicit bias against the elderly compared to an age matched generic avatar. So it seems that the effects of VR embodiment also encompass cognitive functions as well. So based on this research, virtual embodiment can quite literally change your mind. You become more like the 
the person you embody, which is how you can be anyone in VR at the psychological level as well. But all of these avatars serve to anonymize one's, one's real identity and to associate the user with a different identity. But current advances in technology can enable the creation of highly realistic and personalized avatars. And indeed, it seems that the more easily accessible these will be, the more likely is their larger scale adoption, especially for VR mediated communication and collaboration on what has been termed the virtual reality social networks of the future. Major tech companies, as well as various research groups, such as Camera at the University of Baden and also part of, have started to focus their attention on creating these highly realistic avatars. Uh, next slide, please. So these avatars are creating using photogrammetry methods that typically require a rig of cameras, which you can see in the image taken in the camera studio. The, ca the cameras are used for capturing the body and the face, and a processing pi pipeline is then employed for the reconstruction of the images to generate realistic 3D scans. And these scans can then be animated directly by people's movements. Motion capture systems are used that can retrieve individuals' real motions and retarget them to virtual avatars in real time. You will now see my own avatar that we created a, a year ago being animated by my own motion in real time. Uh, can you play the video, please? Yeah, so um, the choice of motion wasn't mine, but for the construction of digital skeletons, it's necessary for people to perform a very wide range of different motions. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? So this technology is very exciting and it's rapidly evolving, but being your digital self in VR is likely to be associated with certain ethical concerns such as data privacy and security issues that could arise due to the necessity to acquire highly personal data such as people's appearance, preferences, kinematic fingerprint, which is the collection of all one's movements and emotions. And these types of highly personal data have never really been captured before, at least not to the same extent, and could potentially be owned by third party software companies that create these avatars. And this might be problematic for a range of reasons. For instance, there could be trust issues related to the possibility to manipulate speech and appearance in real time or offline. There already are issues such as facial reenactment and deepfake technology in 2D video, so there's no reason to believe why this would not be a problem with these 3D uh, virtual humans, arguably with more profound effects if, as well. In a study that we're currently conducting, we're interested in the general population's perception of these personalized and photorealistic avatars in virtual reality, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence driven avatars and the ethical concerns around them. And from a preliminary analysis, we can already see that while individuals' opinions are generally mixed regarding these technologies, the majority of participants expressed worries about data privacy and security, identity theft, the difficulty to differentiate between reality and virtual experiences if a certain level of photorealism is achieved, addiction and losing real life connections uh, amongst other concerns. At the same time, there's a lack of understanding of the long term effects of embodiment, both on how users perceive and use their avatars in VR, but also how this influences, if at all, our perception of the real world, our real bodies and other people as well. You can be anyone in VR, but does this transcend the limits of the medium? Can you just be anyone full stop after experiencing VR embodiment and for how long? This all needs to uh, be determined and it needs to inform strict guidelines and regulation for VR use in the future. But something that is certain now is that due to the COVID pandemic, we live in a world where reality itself has become more virtual. I mean, look at us, we're taking part in a virtual form of communication right now. In this world where digitally mediated communication is the new norm, your digital representation now plays a crucial role in how you are perceived and how you communicate. Chances are that if I give this talk as a digital Albert Einstein or as a child, you will perceive me and everything I've said so far quite differently. At the same time, immersive forms of communication are likely to become increasingly popular in the consumer market in following years, so the options for self-representation will become endless. You could have a meeting as your digital self and then go to a virtual concert as a cartoon character. So considering all of this, I would finally like all of you to take a couple of seconds to think about the following question. 
Who would you like to be in this world where you can be anyone? Thank you.